2024 playoffs. Yes, 2024 playoffs because it's New Year's Day. Uh, it's so weird. I hate that we call it that, but it is what it is. Um, let's get to the first one. Alabama and Michigan facing off there. Uh, they're facing off in the Rose Bowl out west in Pasadena. Biggest thing here, Michigan's the one and a half. Uh, Big Ten teams are notorious for taking the Rose Bowl. Uh, is Alabama able to break the curse and somehow be the SEC team that hasn't been to the Rose Bowl in God knows how long to win the Rose Bowl and break the curse of, uh, you know, or break the streak of the Big Ten teams winning it? Well, Michigan first has to win a playoff game to break their streak that they have going on because a couple of years back, they faced an SEC team, Georgia, in the Orange Bowl, and they got spanked. And then last year, TCU, <laughs> the de- the team of destiny, came out of nowhere and beat them. So if this is like – if they can't do it this year, I have no idea when they're going to do it because like I feel like this is probably the best team that Jim Harbaugh has had. But – You've woken up Alabama at this point. Like, they were dead for, like, the first half of the season. They were sleepwalking, like, who's our quarterback? And then really after the Tennessee game, the LSU game, the, the Auburn game, uh, you know, they had some close games, and they just beat the number one team in the country. I feel like it's Alabama. Like, I feel like every time that you give Nick Saban a month to prepare for a playoff game, he hardly loses. You know, probably you go back to 2014, the Ohio State loss and all that, blah, 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 blah. It's a tough road trip. I don't care. Alabama in this one, it is going to be a close game. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Both defenses are, are really, really playing well. I think that Blake Corum, he's got to do – like, J.J. McCarthy has to throw the football in this game for Michigan to win the game. Like, they cannot do what they did against Penn State and think that they're going to win this football game. But I think that Jalen Milrow and his legs will be the difference in this one and look for Jermaine Bird to have a big game. I'm going to go with the Crimson Tide, I guess, to pull off the upset, but I don't really see an upset, but give me the Tide. All right, I'm going to stick with my preseason prediction. I'm going to take Michigan. I know the offense looks uninspiring, but let me tell you, Alabama is a lucky team. We've already established that. But they're also just not overwhelmingly a good team. Sometimes we see lucky teams that dominate, and then they just have a bad week, and they get lucky, and they they move on, and they win. But I don't think we've ever seen this Alabama team be great all season. I mean, they took care of business against LSU and Ole Miss. Um, and I think the closest thing we saw to it was the win over Georgia, but Georgia looked very sloppy. There's no denying that Alabama's hot right now and they, and they could go on and win the whole thing. But if Michigan is who we think they are and who they've claimed to be all season, I think they should have no issues in this one. So I'm going to go with the Wolverines. Um, and this one, I think it'll be very close, but give me 27, 24 Michigan. All right, Jacob, you have to decide it. We have one to one. (laughs) Yes, um, if Michigan is who Connor Stallions thinks that Michigan is, <laughs> then Michigan can win this game. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, biggest thing for me, you know, you brought a good point. I can't get the, the Iron Bowl game out of my head. I can't. And, and That's a that bad is, game. And that is, is. that you almost got can. beat by Auburn. I That's that's incredible. That You, you know, did team, get beat by Auburn, but you, you did. You did. I mean, you you be, you got beat. Um, in you know a little one by one after, square. Like, they beat Georgia, so I mean, I yeah. But my problem is, is Carson. Like, Carson if you really want to go back to the game, go to the I mean, that's game. the they issue. Look awful in that game. Well, the they problem did. is, but here's the issue: Georgia doesn't play anybody throughout the season like Alabama. So when they get to that point, when they play Alabama, they will it's, have to next year. That's the issue. I mean, that's the problem. So, I mean. Alabama gets their tune up with LSU. I mean, that's that's I mean, they kind of get their feet held to the fire in that one and that rivalry. But as far as Georgia goes, they don't play anybody like that until they get to Alabama in the SEC championship when it all matters. And by that time, you know, Alabama's geared and ready to go because they just play in the Iron Bowl. And but I mean, this one they barely got out. I mean, that's that's the case. So I just can't get that out of my head. If the offense can't get going early, I mean. Michigan's offense, if they give the ball to Blake Corum, I this isn't the Alabama team that had Will Anderson and all the other guys that are run stoppers. Alabama cannot stop the run. I'm telling you right now, there's they cannot stop the run. They can stop the pass this year, but they cannot stop the run. So that's my biggest thing for them. Uh, that's why I have Michigan winning it. 
I think with Edwards and in, in uh, Corum in the backfield, it's a one-two tandem that Alabama, I just don't know if they can last. And the clock is going to be running a lot in this game. I just feel like the clock is going to be on Michigan's side with the ball in their hands, and they just want to have time of possession in this one against Alabama. Basically put the stress on Nick Saban for them to really score late in this game to stay in it. Um, so yeah, you've been outmatched, Tyler. I'm sorry. Uh, the well, SEC, Chet, I think, picked Alabama like a couple uh, of weeks ago. Uh, the ghost of it, Chet. So. Oh man, I forgot to introduce our guest for the show. Chet's ghost is is with us, but <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> so um, yeah, moving from this one, let's go to the other playoff game. Let's go to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Probably the only game that's worth a pulse to talk about in the Superdome this year. Uh, Texas and Washington facing off two and three. Uh, Texas is the favorite in this one, which I was surprised to see. Texas is a four and a half point favorite uh, in this one. I don't know if that's because of locale or what it is, but I think that's kind of interesting to see considering Washington's undefeated. Now, up until this point, Tyler has picked every team that He's picked against every undefeated team in the, in the New Year's Six and, and the playoffs so far. So let's see if he does it again, guys. Uh, but Washington is the last undefeated team that we'll be talking about, uh, of course, with the Heisman Trophy runner-up. So I w- I'm anxious to hear what Tyler has to say regarding this game. Well, I guess I'll kick it off so that way you don't have to wait anymore. Uh, yeah, this is probably one of the – most toughest bowl games uh, to pick, in my opinion. I think uh, this is going to be an instant classic. Uh, I think out of the two playoff semifinals, uh, you know, they're looking at these top two quarterbacks. Uh, these secondaries, man. Texas is secondary. I know that they look good against Oklahoma State, but Oklahoma State cannot move the football. And then Texas Tech, they couldn't move the football either. So they haven't really faced an offense uh, really that can do them. Uh, but, yeah, that Texas uh, rush defense, I don't – Let's see, uh, you know, what Dylan Johnson can do. You know, Dylan Johnson, he's been running hog wild. He ran hog wild in the Pac-12 championship. Uh, but I'm really looking forward uh, to the quarterback battle between Michael Penix and Quinn Ewers. Uh, but I am going to go with my preseason natty champ pick. I'm going to go with the Dogs, Washington Huskies. I'm not going back. If I picked them to win the national championship and I had faith in them to win the preseason, why go back? You got to go down to New Orleans. It's supposed to be a home game for Texas. Who cares? We're the underdogs. Let's go, Huskies. All right. Well, inspiring pick by Tyler. <laughs> Let Tyler uh, give the pregame speech. Why don't you? Brick yeah, and I agree there. with you. Big Penix energy. Am I right? <laughs> hey, big Penix energy. Big Penix energy. Like, yeah, this team, I just, I think they're getting doubted a lot. And I think Michael Penix was probably disappointed he didn't get the Heisman. But he knew he had bigger fish to fry in this game. And I just think this has been Washington's MO all year. They're going to win with defense, but I think Michael Penix makes a special play late in this one. It's going to be high scoring, but I do think we'll see some some good action on defense too. I think it gets into the 30s. Uh, but yeah, give me Washington in this one. I did flip since the last time we spoke. So I'm going to have uh, Washington and, and Michigan. Here, I got you a fun one. Um, I have circumstances. Like, I'm going to pull a chat here. Uh, it has entered my body. I am going to uh, predetermine what's going to happen. Uh, I think that Quinn Ewers is going to have a decent game. Uh, I think he gets hurt in this one. And we get and to see Arch Manning, Manning. <laughs> in, the, in the playoff. And, uh, yeah, I, I feel that Washington's defense – they had by far the best defense in the Pac-12 this season, by far. I mean, that was unbelievable for their defense, what they've done. Um, offensively, I've never seen a team trust their receiver so much in my life. I mean, Penix just throws it up, and they find a way to go get it. Like, it's it's the LSU team of 2019. Like, it's what That's what it is. Man, I mean, throw it up and <laughs> just throw it up and they go and get it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what's happening there. And for them to do things on third and four with a minute 20 to go, and you're only winning by a touchdown and you just throw the ball into a one-on-one man coverage like that. That's, that's pretty ballsy. So uh, no, I, Texas for me, it's, I mean, okay. Is Texas back? Eh, they're, they're here. Hello. Bye. 
I mean, this is kind of their last. Hello and bye. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I mean, for me, this is their last really big step. I mean, because when they go to the the SEC, I just don't think they're going to be this team anymore. I just don't see it happening. Because uh, the teams like Texas Tech and some other teams that you just will wipe the floor with just aren't there anymore. I mean, they're just not not there. So I think Washington wins this one. I think the Pac-12 ends on a great note. It is predetermined at the Heisman Trophy ceremony when Jaden Daniels and Michael Penix hugged it out. Jaden Daniels told them, "Go win the Natty." Like that's why like I'm that, also picking like, Washington. I is, mean, whatever JD Five says, I mean, you got to. He has. Think oh, that's yeah. gonna he has put it in. Like it is in our heads. It is on. It might as well be on paper at this point. But like, I feel like Washington wins this one. I think they're gonna cover the four and a half, and I think they're probably gonna win by two touchdowns. Like, Man, I, so I just going you dumb. I, Even we're all going to go. I'm going to go close, but yes, Washington. I don't so, think it's by 14. <laughs> Wade and I have the same natty. Tyler do, has yeah. Tyler has Alabama and Washington. That's an interesting one. So none of us have the rematch. The rematch. 